Hey, everybody. We're about to talk about Brianna Williams. Everybody's been saying, hey, she should change coaches, but should she really change coaches? We're going to uh, explore some details here about uh, her history, some of her profile here, and what we think may need to go on during this. But don't forget that you are watching Head & Shoulders ATR, where we cover athletes, performances and otherwise that are head and shoulders above the rest don't forget to like and subscribe uh because today we're talking about brianna williams should she change coaches should she stay with the same coach is otto bolton uh not good enough to coach her people have been saying that they've been like yo bolton shouldn't be coaching her uh if coach francis got her she would be going uh and having a great start and everything and one thing i want to say with that right now Brianna Williams frequently has one of the fastest starts in the field. She be sometimes out starting Shelly Ann Frazier Price in some of these uh, races. If you've noticed this, and uh, the only person that is able to compete with Shelly Ann Frazier Price when she's having good starts too uh, will be Talu. So, I mean, Talu has uh, great starts in 100 as well. So, obviously, she's gotten a, she's part of the Olympic gold medalist, uh, gold medal winning four by 100 meter relay which has a jamaican national record so that should say something at least in the positive for Otto bolton but can she do better right can she do better now um let's look here i want to get this out of the way very quickly we got candace hill right here that has the world u18 world record now they call it the the world best right they call it the world best performances because I guess 18 and under, I, I don't know if they have the same, maybe it's a world best because it's off events and the testing isn't the same uh, uh, per se with that. So they call it a world best, but for here, we're going to use it as the world record, but it's the world best. Uh, so Candace Hill, 1098 with a plus 2.0 tailwind. Now she, she literally was at the limit for being legal for the tailwind, all right? For the people that don't know, you need to have a 2.0 or under for a tailwind for it to be legal. Now let's look at the results here. Uh, where is that result page? The results here for the women today, for the races today. Now, Candace Hill right here winded up defeating Brianna Williams, but Brianna Williams also slipped out of her blocks for her first 25 to 30 meters in a dry phase she was really jacked up she slipped and went to her right uh or her right our left on the screen if you see that race we finally got to see the race somebody uh uploaded it online which i'm thankful for so i was able to to actually see that but she slipped out of her blocks uh it messed up her dry phase so she was kind of out of the race i wonder had she had finished at least third because then she had to make up for her dry phase her whole race was uh messed up and then she really couldn't hold it through and got passed up by english gardener toward the end because she was just behind uh candace hill now remember candace hill the reason why i bring her up is very important here candace hill had the uh u18 world record or world best then she got injured. She's just now tr uh, trying to come back. We're going to see what happens over her for the next year, maybe two years, maybe three by the next Olympics. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because she broke Candace uh, Hill's world record here. I don't know if you all remember this, but she did. Remember, she finished uh, at the Jamaican Championships and she ran a 1094. It was wind legal. That was the world best. Now. Here she is. She's still a junior. This was in uh, 2019. Now, we're about to go over this in a second. But remember this. Hold this in mind. 1094. That's four uh, one hundredths of a second faster with less of a tailwind than Candace Hill. Now, what winded up happening here? Well, she got. What the heck is this with this cookies? Get off of my screen. I don't want your cookies. All right. Now, she as a 17 year old had faced a doping reprimand. She said reprimanded without a period of ineligibility after a two day anti-doping hearing. So they wiped it away. So on this list, it's not gonna show her with that. The reason why uh, I bring this up is because the IADP uh, determined that she was 
not at fault for having that in her system and that her guardian uh, had given her something and that it was not at fault. But for some reason, she still decided not to compete at the world uh, world championships. All right. We got to keep this in mind, because if you look at her results here, these are the only results that were uh, taken off. Now, the she went to compete at the uh, U18 championships, the Pan American U20 championships here. OK, remember that the NICAC U18 championships, she did well. Then she went to the Pan American Games uh, U20 championships in San Jose and did pretty well there. But her Jamaican championship times were taken away. How do you all feel about that? If she was uh, not purposely taking anything and they determined it uh, by the investigation that they did, shouldn't she still have her time there? I wonder if that's fair to take away that time. Otherwise, let's look at her personal best. Since that 1094 is not there, she set a personal best this year, a 1097, which is a national uh, U20 record for Jamaica. National U20 record. Keep this in mind. National U20 record. What more can you get uh, with, except for a national U20 record? She also has a national U20 record for Jamaica with a 22-5 set in uh, 2018. All right. Now, those are her two events that she uh, competes in. And then she's part of the national record setting four by 100 meter relay this year. Now, a lot of people saying she should change coaches. Let me do something here real quick. What can she do against uh, Sharika Jackson? You really think she's 19 years old right now. If she was working and she changed, let's just say this year, how much faster do you think she would be if she would be faster at all? But a lot of people are assuming that she would be faster if she coached with, if she worked with Coach Francis. Sharika Jackson's running a 1076 into a headwind, and then she matched her performance with a tailwind. Do you really think she could beat Sharika Jackson? Honestly, honestly, do you think she could beat Sharika Jackson? All right. Now let's go with another athlete, Elaine Thompson Hero. Now we know, even if she didn't run as fast as the Jamaican trials, and she did get beat out the blocks by Brianna Williams, and in the 100, at the very least, at the very least in the 100, uh, to me, it looked like she had it, it was a little bit troubling whether she would have made the uh, team or not in the top three. But it could have just been her taking it as easy as possible after she got blasted out. She looked around and she did it just enough because she knew she wasn't going to win there. All right. But what was she going to do against Elaine Thompson here? And let's not even talk about Shelly Ann Frazier Price which was the winner of both the 100 and the 200 at the Jamaican trials. Cause we got to talk about that and how she came there and blazed the field. All right. And so she blazed the field in the 100. Most definitely. She came through with the win in the 200. What is she going to do against these three ladies? It's a very hard field to compete against. And she's got the national. That means she's faster than Elaine Thompson. Hira, Sharika Jackson, uh, Shelly Ann Frazier price was at, 20 and under 20 and under or the under 20 not 20 and under but the under 20 record belongs to brianna williams so isn't she doing good enough with the coach that she has now i'm putting forth the case we got to look at everything right now what literally what can she do i don't think that it would be a good comparison to say that she should change coaches people are literally like oh she's she's losing she's doing uh, she's got the U20 <laughs> national record for Jamaica. What? Let's say she ran a 10-8. What would that have done for her? Because she could have randomly ran a 10-8. Now, in the finals, that would have done her something and made her through, which I think would have pushed uh, Elaine Thompson Hira out. But, okay. Or Sharika Jackson, one of them. And then we know what happened. Who knows if it would have been a Jamaica clean sweep in the finals Would that have happened. But let's just say that she could have ran a 10-8. Well, maybe they would have ran a little bit faster because Elaine Thompson here, if you look back at that race, she ran just enough for her to win. She's somewhat looking around, making sure she's staying focused on her, on her race. She get let, got left out of the blocks and she did just enough. Just like in the 200, it was clear 
they were not trying to pass Shelly Ann Fraser Price. When she got out on them, they were like, yo, I mean, whatever. We're going to lose this one. Both Sharika Jackson and Elaine Thompson Hero, they both looked like they were holding back behind uh, Shelly Ann Fraser Price. Could have been a respect thing. Could have been like, yo, what's the point here? She just beat us out of the curve. We could work a little bit harder to win this. And what is that going to do? Right? What is that going to do? Because then Shelly Ann Fraser Price is in the lead. And then she could have easily had sped up. We don't know what she could have ran that day. She was in the lead. She did what she needed to do. If somebody came up to challenge her, who's to say she wouldn't have gone faster? So there's a lot of scenarios here. But what can she have done in the 200? Let's say she was working with Coach Francis. Clearly, Coach Francis was working with Shelly Ann Frazier Price. Didn't help her in her 200. She had to change her coach. And then her 200 is there. So maybe there's some uh, stuff with it. Everybody is different. Every coach isn't good for every person. So maybe there's that, right? But we got to keep in mind some things. Maybe we're trying to think that because she's so good that she can be like a thing mo and then win in her respective event. But remember, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, wasn't she 21 when she won the Olympics? I mean, that's two more years for uh brianna williams i mean she was 21 not everybody is going to be able to perform to that high level at a young age a thing mo yeah 19 cool but they're not going to do it so here's elaine thompson here what can she do against elaine thompson here earlier in the year before she started blazing out these times and my my answer to this my answer to that is I don't think she could have done a darn thing, nothing, nothing at all to actually break into that. I don't think uh, her 200 is too far off. You think that her coach or uh, Coach Francis would have dropped her by half a second, over a half a second, because each one of them broke 22 seconds this year. And with them appearing to hold back, what could she have done? She would have had to run literally in the 22 eights and maybe faster in order to make it out of the Jamaican trials. With, especially with them holding back, the only person that would have got knocked out, if anything, might have been um, Shelly Ann Fraser Price if she couldn't keep up with like the quick times. If they were literally holding back that much and they could have literally beat uh, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, the only one that would have been at risk was Shelly Ann Fraser Price. And the evidence here is all of them were holding back, including Shelly Ann Fraser Price. Yeah, new PR, but she looks so comfortable that I think she could have gone faster at the Jamaican trials. And they barely had any rest in between. They were running so fast, right? What they had, one day? One day? That's all? So, in this 1097, now, let's just take her PR at the 1094. But it, it got wiped away, right? But let's just say that she was a 1094. How much more could she have improved upon for these other women? Let's look at this. I want you guys to uh, see this. since. I believe Elaine Thompson here was the one that got third at the Jamaican trials in the 200 or in the 100. Let's look at the results this year. Jamaican national champs. Is this the 100? Yes. Jamaican national champ. She got third with the 1084. She ran a 1082 in the uh, semis and then came back with a 1084. And she did look like she was in trouble for a bit. And then she sped up. We know what her uh, closing speed is. Would she have, would she have uh, missed it? I wonder. She knows how to make the teams. It's like her and Shelly Ann Fraser Price, they'd be making team after team. That's like a reliable one. And if Sharika Jackson was in front of her, I really can't see her running faster than Elaine Thompson Hero here. Because if she needed to, Elaine Thompson Hero would have just ran faster. I think she was capable of running faster than a 1084, um, even though she had a messed up start there. She did what she needed to do. Now, okay, that's that. I think we've set a case here that we got to give her a couple of more years before we make a concrete uh, decision on whether she needs to change coaches. Oh, yeah, and let's not forget. Let's not forget. Brianna Williams, she blazed the booty, the butt cheeks off of the rest of the field on that uh, opening curve in the start in the four by 100 meter relay. Do we got to go back and watch that race? I don't want to get copyright struck on my channel, but go back and watch the Olympic 
four by 100 meter relay, Brianna Williams blowing the booty cheeks, the bricks off the rest of the field when she comes out of the blocks. Really, she needs to change the coach. I think Otto Bolton is doing a great job right now. Now, in the future, I'm sure she will determine if she needs to change the coach. Just like Shelly Ann Frazier Price wanted to change coaches way back in 2016, but you know, the sponsors didn't want her to leave. They kept her there. She finally was able to get out of that. And now we see her going faster. I am sure she's not forced to go with Otto Bolton. She's with Otto Bolton. Ugh, well, how do I say his name like that? She's with Otto for so long. He's got her to win uh, championships. He's got her to, uh, as part of the national record setting team, she was able to beat Natasha Morrison out of her spot there, which got fifth at that, uh, at the Jamaican championships. And as we see, Natasha Morrison isn't doing as good later in the season. Sure. She isn't running uh sub 11 right now. Some athletes just don't perform well, but guess what? After the uh, postseason. but guess what? She performed when the time was uh, called for. She performed when it was necessary and she's got what she needed and she's got the national U20 record. Please tell me anybody else that has run faster than her. They have it. That's the facts. The facts are they haven't run faster than her. She's beating other people that are quote unquote on paper faster than her. Like at the Prefontaine meet, she beat uh, several athletes that are on paper faster than her, even though here, with a slip out of the blocks, we see what happened. She slipped out of the blocks. She didn't, uh, within that, the, her first 30 meters were just jacked up. Her drive phase was completely shot. Her, her, her race pattern was off, and we saw what happened here. Now that we see the race, instead of just the results, those contacts are important. But let's not forget that Brianna Williams is a quick and tough cookie. Oh, yeah, and by the way, Ain't this a good uh, advertisement or, or, or commercial that she has here? I know they ain't paying here. I'm doing some free uh, uh, advertising there, and that's about all they going to get off of me. But, yeah, don't forget, she went to the U18 uh, championships. She went to the U18 championships and beat T.T. Terry. What else? It was a surprise win by a lot of people, right? Even some Jamaicans didn't think she would have won, and yet she came through. She came through with the Jets and won. Then she came through and won in the 200. What else? What else you got to do? What else you got to do in order for people to say, yo, uh, Coach Bolton is doing a good enough job? So for me, no. The answer is no. She should not change coaches, not at this time. Let's give her two more seasons at the very least maybe even to the next Olympics, then you guys can start saying whether she should change coaches or not. Because right now she's facing up against a very talented team. Who do you guys, okay, let me ask you this question. You made it this far into the video. All right, out of the other ladies that she's competing against, let me put them up here right now. Who you want her to take off the team? Who do you want her to take off the squad? If you like Brianna Williams so much, who on this squad do you want them to take off? Do you want her to take off Shelly Ann Frazier Price in the 200? Because I know you don't want her to take her off in the 100. So you're just like, okay, you know what? Our weak link is Shelly Ann Frazier Price because, you know, she didn't medal in the 200. And then Sharika Jackson took herself out in the, in the 200. But logically speaking, we could assume that Sharika Jackson may have a better, ultimately better 200 than Shelly Ann Frazier Price would. I think we could logically say that, but at this point, we would never know because a lot of people said that the R word would have beat the Olympians and then they set her up at Prefontaine and we saw what happened. So who do you want on this screen right now? Brianna Williams. This is the hard question to answer. Do you really want her to take off any of these ladies? Do you want her to take off the double uh, or uh, the, the double Olympic champion that got a double double in Rio and then here in Tokyo? You really want to knock her off the squad in the one or the two? All right. You want to take off the legendary, uh, well, Elaine Thompson Hero is now legendary for the double-double at the Olympics. Even though she's struggled with injury and at the World Championship, she hasn't necessarily performed like that. She does have a silver behind Daphne Skippers, all right, which is a two-time 
uh, gold medalist at the world championships, but she got a silver behind Daphne Skippers in that uh, 2166 in the 200. So that's to be fair enough, right? But do you want her to take off uh, also legend? So legendary uh, Elaine Thompson here, or and the mercurial legendary Shelly Ann Fraser Price, do you want her to knock her out of the 200? Because I can't see you saying, oh yeah, she could just take out her in the 100. Do you want to take out Action Jackson? Action Jackson, do you want to say, well, she took herself out in the 200. She's going to be too working too hard, running the 100, the 200, the four by one, the four by four. She's running everything. So you know what? To be fair, let's rest her up and take her out the 200. All right. Because really, do you think she got a chance to take her out the 100? I mean, maybe at the Jamaican trials, if uh, Bolton peaks her uh, for the Jamaican trials and then she gets to Tokyo, uh, as we see, Sharika Jackson got the Jets. She's better prepared at the championship. This is a sign of good coaching, too, where they could keep getting faster. Coach Bolton, clearly, if she was in the open 100, I think we would have seen a faster time out of her, too. It's only unfortunate that only three athletes can make it. Now we're going to see at the World Championships next year, Shelly Ann Frazier Price got an automatic bid. If Elaine Thompson Hira wins at the Diamond League here in the 100, she's going to get an automatic bid. That means it's two athletes that don't have to go through and compete. I wonder how the rules go. Will there be five athletes in one nation that can go? I think I did see something like that. I know at the very least there could be four because of the automatic bid. But the automatic bid, if it's a double automatic bid because you got the world championship champion Shelly Ann Fraser Price now in the 100 and then if Elaine Thompson here wins the 100 she gets a, an automatic bid herself that's separate from world champion status and then do they take now three additional athletes because I know they don't knock it off it's automatic bid and then you can still get your three which means four athletes can represent now that means we could see Brianna Williams actually come and compete with her compatriots at the world championship next year, we could see coach Bolton's work in action. That's going to be exciting. Now, Sharika Jackson, if she takes the 200, she might get an automatic bid there. We'll see. We'll see how she uh, faces against the rest of the field, but she says she's looking forward to the final in the 100 and the 200. So we're going to see how Brianna uh, Williams faces next year, but I think it's pretty premature for uh, people to say that she needs a new uh, coach. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like, comment, share, because this is an important topic. And most importantly, subscribe. Subscribe and subscribe. Peace out. Until next time, I'll catch you all on the next video.